Maybe Provost could help me. If everybody would open up their switch card app, or at least those of you who have it, and say, uh, if you'll go, the first screen that pops up is normally going to be your spending wallet screen. Of course, interestingly enough, we're doing a live demo and mine's now sitting and spinning. Okay, it opened. Woo, thank goodness. <laughs> right? But uh, so if you go and you look, uh, there's a little emblem on the top that kind of reminds me of the old switch emblem. It's two arrows chasing each other's tails and there's a dollar symbol in the middle. So if you click on that switch logo almost, uh, it gives you the move money function. Within that move funny function on the bottom, it says to a friend. In this case, you can either put a mobile phone number or an email for another switch user. So I'm going to put Prelvis. I'm going to select, I want it to come from my spend wallet. You know, as a matter of fact, Prelvis and I were in Texas for a conference. Let's say that Prelvis and I had went to dinner and I didn't have any cash on me, but we were going to split the bill. And so I said, well, Prelvis, you pay for it. And then I'll, I'll, I'll send you some cash. And that scenario, or... You know, Prevost being in Texas, me being in Utah, we're miles and miles apart. This scenario could also also work. So I put in an amount here to hit. And then, all right, Prevost, if you're ready, I'm going to hit send. Okay, I'm holding up. Can you see that? I know I it just buzzed. Blurry. It's uh, blurry because it's focusing on your face. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right there. Right you can there. see if the little red dot. You can see the little red dot in the corner with the bell means that it's already arrived. And so he's actually now able to use that money inside of his spend wallet within oh, literally like an almost instantaneously. He's now able to use that money from that dinner and be able to, you know, uh, spend and again, pay for utility bills, buy pizza, whatever he needs to do. Um, that, that's fast. I love that. As a matter of fact, it's becoming one of my favorite features because if nothing else, it facilitates community calls, sales calls. And then I have a couple of needy family members. But anyway, it was like kids. But um, hey, for those, um, that, those uh, obviously the exchange and the uh, card program is currently available in the United States. I am excited. Uh, we've actually done some cool things. We've seen some deals. Uh, for those of you who are international switch customers, we are making good progress on the international prepaid card and over the desk trading counter. Uh, we're still sizing up the initial lift. You know, we're still going through the dev documents and making sure that we're on. Uh, but I'm anticipating some exciting announcements at our next um, community call next month about the international program. Hey, listen, if you're not familiar with the card or you haven't bought the card, I highly recommend it. I love the black card giving you an opportunity to enter, uh, to uh, earn extra points uh, when that set of proof of actions goes live and say, uh, get with our customer staff. We'd love to help you. Uh, there's some videos recently that we were creating to help figure out what the card features are. If you're not using that P2P to send Provis money, you know, a tip or something for doing a great job on the community call, you know, get with him. He'll give you his phone number. Uh, we'll get Provost plussed up today. So I uh, appreciate you guys all from our, our upside of the house. Well, I appreciate that, Jay. That was, that was great. And, you know, just like we did a little test run yesterday, I, I was like blown away how, at how fast this is more so at how user friendly the entire website or the entire app and how, well, it flows. It's user friendly and it flows, if that makes sense. So, you know, we're all creatures of habit. We we all I love can't even set up my wallet yet. I'm sorry. Oh, I think someone anyway. I, <laughs> I love how easy it is and how um um user friendly, like I said, and, and how well it flows. So thank you for this, Jay. This this is great. So our next person, we're gonna, if if nothing else, we're going to move on. Um, so our next person we're going to hear from is, um, like I said, the master of scum. <laughs> Let me rephrase that: the master of scrum. Uh, he's the 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 uh, scrum master, and I'm just going to let him take it away because I don't understand what it is he does. Um, so this is a learning experience for me too. So take it away, Nick. You know, it depends on who. You're you're talking to if they call me the master of scum. But um, I've introduced myself a few times. I'm a senior technical project manager, Prelvis. And uh, in the world of software, we go by the term scrum master, and it comes from the world of rugby. If you're familiar when all those tough guys get in the huddle and uh, try to push that ball, these scrums are so powerful. These guys are known to move the earth. Well, if you watch the game closely, there's a couple guys that stand outside of that huddle. So I'm not 
I'm not the talent. I'm not the, the guys that can write the code, but it's my job. And the reason we call ourselves scrum masters is the scrum master in the game of rugby is to look into that, that scrum and to find the efficiencies that can get their team to move that ball forward. So in the world of project management, my real job is, let's say one of my senior engineers, who's his time is much more valuable writing code than chasing something that's keeping him from writing code. And I do a daily meeting with my team saying, you know, what did we work on yesterday? What are we working on today? And is there anything standing in your way of success? And if we identify those things, whether it be myself or those engineers, I go fight that battle behind the scenes so they can stay at their desk writing code and we can deliver quicker. So that's kind of the genesis of the name Scrum Master. Um, and I tell you, I have been with Switch almost a year now. And where we have been in that year has been such an incredible ride. Um, one of the most special projects I feel I've ever been a part of. Today, they asked me to just talk a little bit about some of the fundamentals. I don't have a lot of fancy slides like my colleagues. Um, and a lot of the people on this call, I feel, are not your average crypto community person. I see a lot of familiar names in the chat and I know who they are, but today they wanted me to talk a little bit about custodial versus a non-custodial wallet. Switch is such a fantastic product. We offer both. So one statistic I found out recently, I'm going to start with the custodial wallets. Prelvis, you talked about how your world changed a little over a year ago and you've been doing this crypto world for a little bit longer. So you're kind of an outlier. I'm more of the 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 crowd that came late to the party as it started hitting the news with a if people remember Dogecoin when it got all popular. So the statistic I read is that 90% of people that have bought a cryptocurrency have done so within the last year uh, or since this big Dogecoin thing happened. So I count myself like a lot of the regular crypto traders out there that the first time I ever purchased a cryptocurrency, it was Dogecoin. And I did it through a centralized wallet or exchange. I used Coinbase. They're kind of the 800 pound gorilla out there along with Binance. Now, there's a lot of perks that come with trading through a centralized wallet like Coinbase. Now, what centralized means is it is highly tied. I'm just going to stay with Coinbase to that company. Um, you're trading through their exchange. There's going to be some fees that you see there. And uh, for me, one of the biggest differences from the centralization, where, and I think the reason that most people start there is it's a little bit easier. If you lose your password, you can call Coinbase's customer service or send them an email saying, can you help me reset my password? There's a little bit more handholding. Um, now, as we've seen in the news, a lot of people have talked about some of the things going on in the industry. We've seen uh, groups like Celsius, which was an exchange or is an exchange, and FTX. Now, if you're part of a centralized exchange, um, when a company like a Celsius or an FTX has a rough period, they can pause your withdrawals from your centralized wallet because it's on their books. It's part of their assets. So I personally have about $500 in Celsius. They were running a promo that if I bought a certain amount of ETH, I'd get $50 in Bitcoin and I wanted that Bitcoin. So it's still there. I still have my money, but currently they pause withdrawals. So a centralized wallet is really tied to an organization now where a lot of people, as I got further into the crypto scene, um, I now prefer my non-custodial wallet. And in Switch, uh, in the videos that my colleagues have shown, is you saw two wallets in the video that Jay was holding. There was a rewards wallet. When your nodes earn points and rewards, the rewards will go into that rewards wallet when we start distribution. And that's where you'll accrue all your Switch coin. And then we also have what we call our crypto trading wallet, which is our centralized wallet. Now, the main difference I find is with our non-custodial wallets, you have 100% ownership of your crypto. Nobody can do anything with uh, what is in that wallet. But also, it becomes a very much a game of accountability. So with a non-custodial wallet, when you sign up, you're given a 12 to 24 uh, seed phrase, 12 to 24 words. And you need to write that down on a piece of paper. And I know some people keep them in safe deposit boxes or somewhere where they're not gonna lose it. You don't wanna write these 12 to 24 words, however long the seed phrase is on a piece of paper 
the re, uh, sorry, and then lose it, you want to put somewhere safe, like a safe deposit box or some, a locked drawer. Um, but if you put it on your computer, like let's say you take a screenshot of it or you save it, hackers out there are becoming more and more engrossed in how they can get that. So it's your best interest to write it down on a piece of paper because if a hacker was able to access your hard drive and find your seed trays, that's the only time that this crypto would not be yours. And the two main ways to do uh, a non-custodial wallet is like through Switch. We have a software or mobile experience where you can access it through a web app or a mobile app. There's also hardware wallets where I know some people say the best thing you can do with your crypto is to buy a bunch of Ethereum or eventually Switch, whatever the asset is, put it in the hardware wallet and go bury it for 10 years and keep your key phrase and come back and it'll be in your best interest. Kind of like when you don't want to look at your 401k every day. Um, the, the side note is, is I, I met a customer yesterday um, who had misplaced their 12 uh, seed words to uh, one of their Switch wallets. And uh, luckily, this is a very successful gentleman. And he, he, I think he only had one smart note on there, but he just considers it lost. Because if he doesn't have those 12 keywords, you can't call our customer service agents who I truly feel are the best in business. They have a one-day turnaround, a one-call resolution on almost everything. Um, but if you call them and said, look, I lost my 12-word uh, key phrase, they'd have to unfortunately tell you, you're out of luck. And so there, there's there's a bonus to having that centralization because you have a little bit more customer support when it comes to missing a password. But there's also the bonus on the non-custodial wallet of having that 100% ownership. I personally use a little bit of both and it's kind of a personal preference. So that's kind of my spiel today. Um, the extreme case of losing, I, I, some of you might have read about this in the news. There's a gentleman that lost a hard drive uh, that had um, at the peak, I think it was almost a billion dollars of uh, Bitcoin on it. He has the 12 keyword phrase, but somebody threw out his uh, hard drive in a dump somewhere in Germany. He, he's asked the dump, I will pay you 10%, you know, $70 million if you help me recover this hard drive, as yet he doesn't have it. So like you said, there's perks, there's a lot of different ways you can go. But um, with a non-custodial wallet, the, the last thing I'll say is to your crypto, it's your keys. With the custodial wallet, you get a little bit more support in the community. Thankfully, Switch offers both. I'll turn it back to you, Travis. Thank you so much, Nick. That, that was great. And I, I promise I will not call you the scum master anymore after the explanation. So I appreciate it. That was, <laughs> Thanks, boss. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was a great breakdown as far as what you do as far as a project manager and, <clears throat> and how everything coincides, how everything plays together. So I appreciate that. Um, next, we have up to bat, Mr. Scott Tustin. He's the VP of, of uh, Sales and Marketing. He has a background in Web3 and blockchain technology. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to let him take it away. Uh, thank you, Provis. Again, I, I just want to publicly uh, thank you uh, for coming on and doing this with us. Uh, I, like, like you mentioned, we've been trying to get you on here for a couple months now. So uh, I, I appreciate, hope you don't mind my uh, persistence, but uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, and, and again, uh, uh, I apologize for the inconvenience of the rescheduled time. Uh, uh, we do appreciate our com community and appreciate everybody's time and, and uh, sorry for that, that uh, reschedule. Uh, so what, one of the, the, the most commonly asked questions that we get, especially with some of the updates we've been rolling out, it is about action points and their relationship and the ratio and how that's converted into calculating rewards. So I want to talk about that a little bit uh, and to dive in a little bit and and, and just a, a little bit more education on that topic. Um, so in the next slide, what we've got is, is uh, talking about um, where these uh, uh, action points are not the same thing as switch tokens. So action points are earned when uh, action items, which are listed in the light paper, the action items are uh, a task that, that you on the blockchain can complete. Uh, and then those earn action points. Okay. So right now, the only action item that is being rewarded is was your node online for at least six hours a day. And then that earns you action points. 
Um, the amount of action points that can be earned on the community is uncapped. That's based on how many people are in the community, how many actions are created every day. Uh, that number is completely uncapped based on the size of the community uh, could, could differ or grow. Okay. As far as the actual rewards tokens, that distribution is capped. That is according to our smart contract that was in the charter that was just voted on. There's a set distribution of tokens. Uh, and, and I do the math here. I break it down. So in year one, uh, there will be a, a total distribution of 25 billion tokens. Okay. If you divide that out, that's 68 million and some change every single day. Okay. So to determine the ratio, because this ratio, it's not a set number. It's not every day, this many points equals this many tokens, uh, because that number could change on every single day. So if you wanted to know how your daily distribution was, was calculated, it would be the total daily distribution. So right there at 68 million, 493, 150, that is the, the total daily token distribution in year one. Uh, and then it would be divided by your action points that you earned in that one day. So it'd be a ratio, uh, basically like if, if we've got a pie uh, and there's a sliver of pie for, for each day. So we can't create any more pie. We just cut it up into different slivers based on the activity uh, on, the, on the network, on the blockchain, based on the community. Uh, so that's how that that's, that's calculated. Uh, again, it's not a set number. Uh, because like the amount of action points that are earned on any day uh, could vary. Uh, and uh, next slide. So this is the uh, the light paper. If you if you've not read over the light paper, the light paper is hosted on our website. That's the link right there. Um, so in the back, this addendum A is that is actually the whole formula for the blockchain right there. It's, it's laid out. You can go look at it. Um, Again, action items, uh, completion equals earned action points. Uh, again, the only thing that is being earned right now is was your node hosted online? Uh, all the future actions uh, we talked about earlier about the blockchain being launched, uh, that's got to happen first before these future action items come online. Uh, and, and as we showed in that checklist earlier that Adrian showed, the blockchain getting launched online you know, is the next step towards that distribution. Uh, again, I, I encourage you to go read the light paper, look at the formula. Uh, there's a lot of information. It's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. That's a phrase we say a lot, uh, but all the information's there. And then, uh, you know, we got a shout out earlier. I'd like to give another one to our support team. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to support. Also, we do have a blog that was written on this topic about points versus rewards and goes into that a little bit more in detail. So uh, again, reach out to support, read the light paper, check out the blog, and, and we'll answer any additional questions we have that we can help you with. Uh, and again, Prelvis, back to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate that, uh, that breakdown as far as points versus rewards. But if I can, I, I want to actually expound on that more if I can. And, and, and make this more rela relatable because, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, nodes changed my life, right? I'm talking about a country boy from the sticks of Tennessee that I got involved with something I knew nothing about. However, when I first got involved until maybe a year, year and a half later, I had accumulated all these uh, or all these tokens or points or whatever, however you want to put it, right? And then when the blockchain came along or when when, when uh, uh, that token went to market or it had value, guess what happened? Because of all, everything I had accumulated with the two nodes that I started out on, it changed my life. It turned me into something that I never fathomed before. It turned, you know, one of the things, you know, we grow up uh, with, with our parents, you know, and grandparents, you know, we're taught to go to school, get a, you know, get, a, get an education, get a great job, Right. And retire from that job, you expect to live off the cost of the uh, retirement when the retirement is only probably about 40 percent of the cost of living. You can't save your way to be rich. You can't save your way to be wealthy. I like to coin this as far as nodes. And the reason why I love nodes is because it changed my life. I like to look at it as like the lazy man way of making or becoming rich or becoming wealthy. 
because you never know how your life may change. And like I said many, many times before, this this is like what I, I ask you the question: What would you rather have? The golden goose? I'm sorry, the golden egg or the goose that produces many golden eggs? That's what Node and blockchain technology is all about. So everybody out there listening on the sound of my voice. If you guys have not purchased your, whether it be a smart note, full note, or whatever, or light note, I I challenge you to do it because they will change your life. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. That's my disclaimer. But I know what it what is done for me. I know what it's done for others. Um, and I know what it's going to continue doing for others just be sim simply because of the way our technology is changing, is, is evolving. This is looked at as the fourth industrial revolution. If you guys don't understand that, go back in history and look at the other three. You know, so this is life changing. This, I mean, it's, it's changed my life. You know, I'm, I don't have to, you know, worry about putting in a leave request to take time off, you know, for whatever. I just leave. You know, I'm at home. I'm, I'm, I'm my own man. I, you know, I work my own hours. So I just wanted to expound on that. To, it, to make people out there understand the importance of nodes and blockchain technology. You know, we, we see it in our education, uh, uh, crypto talks all the time. So next person we're bringing, bringing up, he's the, um, the cleanup crew, the cleanup man. You know, he's up in the batter box now, Mr. Brad Wilden. Um, I have a lot of respect for him, as I said before. Um, he has an extensive background when it comes to banking, although he's not, I'm pretty sure he's not holding those banking hours right now. But um, hey, when I first met Brad, you know, he rec he was talking to a couple other people. This was in Austin at the uh, Consensus 2022 uh, earlier this year. He, he recognized me. Obviously, I'm easy to recognize, you know. Like bald head guy with a beard, with a huge beard, and his face just lit up. And you know, he finished that conversation, came over, you know, spoke to me. You know, we immediately immediately had a had a had a a great connection. Um, and you know, he's the president and COO of Switch. So, without further ado, Mr. Brad Wilden, take it away. Thanks, Pro. Thanks, Pro. Let's make sure we uh, pay a little extra for all that stuff. So I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. And I don't. I don't know why I get closer to my computer when I start talking. It's kind of like my wife's like, you don't need to talk louder when your speaker's on in your car. You just talk normal. It's okay. So I'll back away. So uh, anyway, super excited to, to be here with all of you today. I love our community around the world. I love what we're doing here at Switch. I love our team. Uh, and and yeah, you're right. My brother used to, he's, he used to tease me. He was a dentist. He's a dentist and he used to tease me about bankers hours. And I'm like, dude, you only work four days a week. So I don't know what you're talking about, but now we work around the clock. I think some of us are sick because we've been working too much, but we love what we do. And uh, we are trying to get everything out, push, pushed out as fast as we can. There's a lot of good questions. Um, I kind of, <clears throat> I, I kind of want to tell a quick story of how we started. I've been doing this almost two years now. And when we started, we were at a little house uh, it is an office, but it was a little house that was turned into an office built in like 1920. We put some some ta folding tables in the front room, brought in our cars, our, our computers, and uh, it was freezing cold up there. It's up in the mountain area, and uh, it, it was super cold. I cut, I'm going to take this office. I don't know if I can do this or not, but I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm going to show you where we're at right now. This is at a partner's. This is who's been doing all the technology and what they've grown to. I kind of want to show you if I can with my camera. Um, let me turn off my virtual background. So this is the little cube I'm in. Um, not sure. But I kind of want to show you just a quick glimpse of where we started out at that little office. So you can see that. kind of that way of all the people. Let me walk over here real quick. So this, sorry. Can you guys hear me, Ralphus? Can you still? Yes, we hear you loud and clear. And then this is the other side. You can see all the offices down there and all the computers as well as down there. So anyway, I wanted to show that to you. Jay's just past Jay. Here's Jay right here in this little cubby. There he is. 
So, all right, enough of that. But it's kind of cool to see what we've grown into from that little house in the mountains that was frozen and, uh, and we'd have to bring in little heaters and work at that little lifetime table that uh, we brought in. I'll put back my virtual background so it looks a little more professional. Um, anyway, I don't know. I just wanted to show that to everybody so they can kind of see where we're at, what we're doing. All right, let me get my notes here and get back on track. Um, I'm I'm uh, planning to come up there in 2023. So awesome, awesome. That would be great. Firsthand. So like there was a bunch of questions. Um, I want to talk about our product first and how amazing it is. We we've said, hey, we want to off ramp and on ramp fiat or cash. We can do that. You saw that in the presentation today. Um, that's a big part of the crypto world is actually spending your cash. I've been living on our product with my paycheck going to our product and our debit card um, for, I don't even know how many months now. So I love it. We have a really good product. You saw Ryland, he is working hard to, he came in and says, guys, we have way too many clicks to purchase a product or set up our card. And he is working on a lot of updates to make it easier, make it more user-friendly. And we are gonna get this to the world. The product that we have that's working right now is the exchange and the card, and it's in the US only. We did just sign a contract with a global uh, partner. Those of you who have been with us for a long time, we started out with a global partner that um, we had some problems with and they didn't promise everything or deliver everything that they promised. So we had to refigure. We brought some people in, Jay helped big time with this and got us a US product in a very short amount of time, as well as give credit to our dev team. I said, I love our team. I love every one of our team members. We, we work hard uh, and you know we, we've talked about um, the Scrum Master. There, there's so much more than the Scrum Master. Nick's great. And I can't even explain the background work that's been done. So there's a question here, and I'm gonna get the questions now of, which blockchain will be will we be launching on? It will be the Switch blockchain, which is amazing. We will be building a bridge to an ERC-20 token, um, and that will happen later. But I think it was in Adrian's uh, slideshow that it showed the steps. And there is definitely steps in the blockchain world of what you need to do, what you need to create. So we're creating the blockchain as well as our product at the same time. We've always, since we've been started, we want it to be a blockchain with a purpose. Our purpose is to have a debit card and an exchange to help people live on crypto, as well as introduce those people that may be hesitant to get into the crypto world. We want to make it easy. We want to make it comfortable for those that want it to, to participate uh, in the crypto world. We feel like we're doing that and we continue will we will continue to move forward on uh, making it easier, making it better and being a super, super big time player in this market. Um, let's see some other questions. I'll have to scroll back, sorry. Um, there was a couple I definitely wanted to get to. Um, we have asked those of you that purchased nodes way back when we said we would do a retroactive um, distribution back to February 25th, that will happen. We are showing in a beta form the amount of rewards that you have earned by having your um, node on. So just know it's in beta, so that can be up and down. So it's not a set amount and it has not been recorded on the blockchain yet. We are less than a week away of launching that blockchain. And uh, hopefully within that week, as well as distributing and recording those rewards on the blockchain. Um, and I think that was one of the questions as well by Ramunas, and I apologize if I said that wrong or, or not, and, and Serpa as well asked that same question. Um, let's see, am I miss, maybe help me to anybody of, of any questions. Um, let's see, Everyone, I think everyone's gotten answered. So yeah, definitely go um, look at our exchange. The products that we have to offer are, you know, a crypto debit card in the US, and an exchange in the US. And you can use those together or separate. 
Um, obviously, if you look at our light paper and our action items that Scott talked about, um, it will help you it, it earn more points, which essentially will give you a bigger percentage of the distribution for that day. So I would encourage you to get a card. Um, it also lowers your fees uh, on the exchange. On the trade fee, you'll notice if you have a black card, you do not have a trade fee. It's zero dollars. Um, the other thing that you may have noticed recently, if you're using other exchanges, they have some of them have put a 60 day window on. If you buy Ethereum, you can't send it anywhere. We still have uh, lived up to our, not promise, but to our strategy of making sure that when you buy and sell crypto, that you can either off ramp the cash or off ramp your digital asset to another wallet in a, in a quick amount of time. And we have lived up to that and are continuing to live up to speed as part of our strategy and feel like we, we have an amazing product and we appreciate the community um, being patient with us. We have been working on this a long time. We are doing it the right way. Uh, we are studying out. A lot of this has never been done before. So we have to figure it out as we go and then make sure our lawyers are okay with it and uh and sign off and move forward and, and especially adrian will say yes or no she mostly says i have a question and i get a little scared when that happens but we have an amazing team to make sure we're providing what we said we provide uh, and we're continuing to do so appreciate everyone i think uh all the other questions have been asked um not sure if if anyone has any else throw it in the chat if you do and i'd be glad to answer them so, Brad, I, I really love the fact that you are making you guys are making it so easy because, as you know, for those of us who've been around crypto or even um, heard about crypto that may be new to crypto is the, the, the problem with crypto is the on ramp, you know, bringing fiat into crypto. Right. Um, and, you know, maneuvering that way. I love the fact that you guys are making it so convenient for uh, people that aren't educated in crypto. Um, that 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 convenience means everything for, especially for the new person that may get frustrated because uh, of a learning curve. So I, I want I want to expound on that, and make sure that people understand, you know, what you're doing as far as the on ramp off ramp uh, process, and also on the flip side of that. When you do have crypto, if you do own a node or whatever, in order to monetize what you're earning from that node, you know, it's important to, you know, for the offering process as well to monetize it. You know, we just showed how easy it was, you know, to send it uh, 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 via the mobile app. Um, and, and also I've seen other videos, you know, you have a tap to pay option, you know, with your mobile phone, you know, so I love the convenience and how you know, switch is evolving or, you know, just with this whole Web3 uh, uh, evolution, you know, um, I think it's great. And I commend you guys for it. I, I want to say I appreciate you know, everything you guys are doing, all the hard work behind the scenes and making this happen. Um, oh, appreciate I thought you had something to say. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. Promise. Yes. So I do have a question, though, if, if you want to mind. You know, so with everything that has happened with, you know, with the whole FTX debacle and, and you know, and now, you know, with the announcement of Switch having a blockchain and things of that nature, um, and and with everything that's going on in crypto, right, we, we you know, we obviously know those of us that are educated in crypto, we know that a lot of the bankers, uh, the, the big financial institutions didn't like Bitcoin they don't like crypto, but they like the blockchain technology. You know, we know, you know, JP Morgan and Chase, you know, or, or, or Jamie Dimon has made statements, you know, just recently within the last few months, as far as um, he was talking about uh, taking down his whole credit card department. And the reason why is because we, and, and he, he also made a, a follow-up statement, anyone that's employed here, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, anyone that's employed here um, will basically get fired if they, you know, opposed against it. Now, 
we started digging deeper into that. And what we found was that J.P. Morgan and Chase, or Chase Bank, I should say, uh, Goldman Sachs, BlackRock, uh, Citigroup, all these different huge financial institutions are claiming their position, their stake in the metaverse. And I know that was a long drawn out way to get to where I'm going, but where does where do we see, if you can speak on this, if you can't, I understand. Uh, where do you see switch in the or or will switch have a presence in the metaverse? How about that? Well, it's interesting. In the metaverse, we've had a bunch of people ask us for the ability to come and talk to them about the ability for off and on ramp of fiat. So, um, yeah, we would love to be a part of the metaverse and and actually be the bank in the metaverse. You know, we're not a bank, obviously, we're a fintech company, we don't have a charter or anything like that, but Mm -hmm. we would love to be that payment provider and exchange provider in the metaverse. So are we a part of it yet? No, we're not, but we would love to, and we we entertain any options or, or opportunities that we may have in that arena for for sure. So yeah, uh, are we a part of it now? No, but do we, are we open to the idea? Absolutely. And so let me, there's a couple of questions too that I just, about the company nodes. So the company mm-hmm. nodes, just like we've said all the time, it's a 75, 25 split and it's in the light paper as far as November 17th. Um, then it went full and all the nodes of the company are on as well as, all, and, and they're all the same. They're in the same, they get the same points now moving forward from November 17th forward. Um, hopefully that answers you that question. I know it's been asked a couple of times. And then the other question is uh, power pay for green. Um so green is, uh, they, they got a kind of a new person over there. We're all different companies, so I'm not exactly sure, but they are fixing and getting th- some things up to speed on their end. And PowerPay is in our scope. That's a, you know, a developing uh, or a developer type of phrase, but it's in our scope and it's on a roadmap as far as our scope goes to get back with them and partner with them on PowerPay. But they are working on some other uh, cleanup items on green. And um, let's see, there's someone else. So what exchange did you white label? Uh, we use Prime Trust as our U.S. exchange. Um, estimated time for switch token lot. So in, within the next week, we will have the switch token or switch. We don't call it the switch token, the switch rewards uh, or the switch blockchain launched. Um so, and then that's a good question. How many of the tokens from the company notes can be sold each year to not dump the price? And there is a restriction on those kind of like, it's not, I kind of compare them to RSU. Those of you who have been in that world. Um, but yes, there is a restriction. And we actually do the company notes to protect big, huge dumps happening in that first year because so many are distributed. Um, we're, we're not here to dump our own coin. We wouldn't establish and pay millions of dollars for all the developers each month to create a product like we have with an exchange and a debit card. And those aren't even tied together anyway. So um, good questions. What is the maximum dollar amount of crypto you can buy each day and how is it determined? So you can buy a million. Uh, well, it's it's broken out to, and we're going to put a chart on our website to get not to get into the weeds, but that will be on our website as well. We'll have the exact uh, breakdown. So that's a great question, but you can go to our website and I'm sure Scott's getting some great blogging ideas to uh, create as well. Um, when will the products be available for purchase with Switch Rewards? We we were, well, we have a couple that we, we've already have ready. Um, the hard part about that is it's like, all right, what are we going to put above the other things that we have to develop to make that? So we're hoping mid next year, I don't want to give exact time, but we have to have um, our global card ready to be able to make the marketplace work too, because we want to create that fair, you know, to the whole world, not just the U.S. customers. Um, yeah, whoever just put that on the event, um, they, look at look at the light paper. It's in there. Uh, if people have one to 10 switch smart notes, go look at the light paper. I'll answer that question. 
Um, and I think we have, in what jurisdiction is switch your word card? So right now, the U.S., um, we are working globally uh, to get that done. All right, we've gone past our half hour. I think we answered any questions. Um, I think that's it. So appreciate everyone's patience, throwing out these great questions. Let's turn it over to Scott to give those light nodes away. Yes, sir. Let's do this. <laughs> Yeah, no, this was fun. I know we, we went over a little bit what we expected to, but I think we got a lot of people's questions answered, which is great. Um, so we 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 had two winners. It, we, again, we had the first person to retweet uh, our last tweet and the first person to post on Instagram story. Uh, our Twitter winner is uh, Nexisum Sleep Wellness Center. Uh, so I will send them a message uh, on Twitter to get their information. And on uh, Instagram is uh, my friend and yours as well, Billy Womack, uh, was our Instagram winner. So, uh, but yeah, we appreciate it. We Again, we've never done a, a giveaway on a call like this, so we just want to do something fun. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the call. Again, we'll be posting this, um, uh, the video on our community call hub page and our YouTube channel. We can watch all our previous videos. Uh, and then on this next slide, we've got all our social media links as well as contact for support. Uh, support has a ton of information, as well as our blog. Uh, support has a ton of frequently asked questions, articles, uh, live chats. Uh, we are super, super proud, super happy to have our support. So feel, please uh, take advantage of that uh, resource. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, if we don't talk to you soon, Merry Christmas from our family to yours. Happy holidays. Uh, and, and you know you can go to the YouTube and watch that dancing video of Brad. <laughs> hey, that's, one that's last great. thing. One last thing, Scott. I just want to say thank you for being persistent and at, keep kept asking me to be a part of this. I'm excited. I'm, I'm I know I was a little nervous at first and kind of all over the place, but I calmed down. Uh, I always I always get like that. But uh, you know, I just want to leave everybody with this. Um, everybody wakes up with a chance and a choice. It's up to you to take that chance to make that choice to go switch. All right. There you go. Well done. Happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everyone. See you. Yeah.